Hello and good morning. My name is Dr. Lucas Craig and I'm an associate professor at SUNY Canton. I'm also the department chair for the Mechanical Engineering Technology Department and Energy Systems. And I'm here this morning to talk to you all about my experience, uh, my feelings, and thoughts about Mark Rober's creative engineering design course. So stay tuned. First, check out this cool creative intro video that I did. Okay, so before I start talking about the class, I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a background uh, so you kind of have an idea of how much uh, information or engineering I kind of knew before coming into this class. Um, <clears throat> I do have uh, a, a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering and I have a master's and a PhD in mechanical engineering. So a lot of the stuff that he was doing <clears throat> like the big robots, pop footballs, uh, that design process I kind of knew. But being on the more creative side, uh, I, I just started kind of picking up. Um, for the last few years, I've been trying to learn and make YouTube videos, trying to learn Premiere Pro. Uh, so this was a perfect opportunity for me to um, take this course and pick up as much as I can. I was very excited. I uh, really had no idea what to expect um, but uh, I was looking forward to it. So some of my background that I have <clears throat> during my PhD um, years, I was awarded a NASA GSRP scholarship. So I actually got to take part in flying in uh, different aircraft to look at different types of storms. Um, I worked with NCAR, which is the National Center for Atmospheric Research, and NASA. Um, so I got to fly on the C-130, and I got to fly on the DC-8, and with a bunch of different types of instruments on the plane where we get to actually fly through clouds. On the NASA side, we were actually flying through hurricanes. Um, so that was very exciting. Um, and so I have a lot of background in working with different types of sensors, different types of in instruments, mechanical aspects, electrical aspects, programming. Um, so I was very looking forward to getting the more creative side of engineering. Okay, so the, uh, the overall class <coughs> was split into three different categories or three different projects. The first one was a mechanical second one was electrical and the last one was an advanced <coughs> where um, he uh, where mark actually used uh, some cool different techniques like 3d printing or laser cutting um, to finish the project <laughs> actually i use 3d printing for pretty much every project because um, i love it uh, i pretty much print probably five out of the seven days of the week um, in my house, you can't go probably two feet without seeing a printed part. Um, I mean, my rain gutters, my fish pole holders, uh, my knobs in my closet rods on the outside are printed. Um, my remote holder is printed. I got 3D print parts in my cabinet drawers to hold scissors, to hold paper, pens. Um, so, you name it. I pretty much have printed it. Um, let's go on to what I did for each project, give you a quick summary, um, just to kind of what I did and give you some experience with it. So the mechanical project, the first project, uh, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a lot of, for a few years. I just haven't had time and this was a perfect opportunity. So I actually called the title um, Filet Efficiently. So I love fishing and I love cleaning. I probably love cleaning the fish probably more than I do fishing. But there are times where um, I mess up when I actually fillet the fish or clean the fish. 
And typically what happens is <clears throat> when I clean a fish, I can clean one side and <clears throat> perfectly fine. Okay, but when I flip the fish over, basically what happens is it becomes an uneven um, at the bottom. And so what I try to fillet the top part off, um, I can't get my knife in the right spot and I actually leave some um, fish on the bone. And so I wanted to create something that could avoid that. It was quicker and easier to clean the fish. Something eventually that would be portable that you can bring out that expands out, folds up, and then boom, you can go ahead and clean. Um, so <clears throat> what I did was I said, okay, um, let's go ahead and design it for just perch first. So small pan fish from like 8 to 15 inches. And basically what I had was a flat plate and I had an insert that would pop off, pop in, or pop out. Okay, and it was flat. The insert was flat first, so you can fillet the one side. And then what you do is you flip it over um, or pop a new insert in, and it had a bump where you can then put that uh, clean side of the fish on and go ahead and finish the second half of cleaning the fish. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> the video that I'm showing, you can see some of my design process and um, issues that came about. Uh, I'm not completely finished with it. Hopefully by the end of the year I'll have a more finished design. Um, but I have some pretty cool clamps that, that basically slide on, <coughs> clamp down, and then um, a piece to hold the head up so we can get that second fish cleaned. So Cool. So that was the mechanical build. Um, I had great interactions with my peers. They gave me great suggestions because I used the legs first. And basically what happens is it collapsed in the middle when I was cleaning. And so they suggested using some sort of slots for legs. So I ended up doing that. That seemed to help. Um, so it was, it was great to get the peer review to put up and to get comments and feedback back. So appreciate that. Okay, so now... The second build uh, was more electrical and programming. And so I was teaching a class this coming spring semester and it involved basically using programming and sensing. So this was perfect. And what I decided to do is we had a, a RC dyno or dyno chassis that we could, uh, that I wanted to measure revolutions per minute on. I wanted to figure out how fast the wheels were spinning and then calculate theoretically how fast this would be going. So, and this is a project that I did and then I'm going to have the students actually make their own and compare with my results this coming spring semester. So what I ended up doing was grabbing a photoresistor that would measure light intensity um, on a flywheel because the flywheel basically had white and black markers that would detect when it would go into the white and black. Um, I 3D printed a mount for the sensor to go on and then I basically hooked up the circuits so I had a bunch a couple resistors that I had to hook up and then I hooked it up to basically <coughs> a National Instruments data acquisition card and then hooked that to the computer and I programmed um, how to read the voltage in and then use equations to calculate revolutions per minute. Um, so I was very happy with that. I finished that one. Um, and then <clears throat> actually this coming week, this is the second week of the spring semester, the students actually are going to start hooking that up and programming them themselves. So it was a win-win for me for that project. That was great. Then the um, third project uh, was more in advanced. And so um, this one, <clears throat> it's been something that I've been wanting to have outside my office door for office hours and it's a ticket machine sometimes I get sometimes five or six students waiting in line to come into my office and when I come out I'm not sure who was next so this would be uh, a way to avoid any issues and to give them a little bit of uh, something to do while they're uh, basically just waiting around so I, I just kind of started brainstorming this during the class, uh, I just had some ideas about 
Uh, maybe I want to make it a ticket machine, maybe use a QR code or maybe their card slide, um, maybe have some games that they could play. I don't know why they're waiting. And what I was going to do is during the first week of the semester, so last week, I met with a group of students that are doing um, the one class with the sensors and stuff. And we brainstormed for three hours about what we would want um, <clears throat> or what I would want and then what they could think of too. So it was great. Uh, I'll sh I'm showing you some video now of stuff that we're doing that we're writing down for brainstorming. But in basically what we thought of was we'd have a box where <clears throat> the student would come up. They could um, use a QR code on their phone, take a picture, and then go to this website or wherever where it would be a list of questions. Um, is it for this class? Is it a homework question? Is it a test question? Um, and then they hit submit. And then on the side of the box, or maybe the whole box, is a Rube Goldberg machine um, with different sensors. It could be temperature sensors, it could be weight sensors, something that would um, <clears throat> trigger the engineering background for them. For example, maybe they have to enter the angle of, uh, of the pipe where a ball would shoot out and then the ball would have to land on a, on a force pad or something to activate something. Um, so that's, that's, and then eventually once they, the, once the Rube sorry, once the <coughs> Rube Goldberg machine finished, uh, then it would print out a ticket. And then we'd also send that information into my office with a monitor that would tell me who was the next in line. So we ordered some parts. They're going to come in. They're going to start doing programming and start thinking of different types of Rube Goldberg setup or parts to make this happen. So I was very excited. Can't wait. <coughs> Hopefully in a, in a month or two, we'll have the actual final design ready to go and rock and roll. So, <coughs> so now... Um, I've kind of talked about what I did uh, for those projects and what I plan to do. And now, really, it's just my overall experience. Uh, I, th I thought it was great. Um, it uh, it gave me a different perspective of someone else in the field and how they think and their design process. <clears throat> um. I picked up new techniques. I picked up new instruments or tools that I would have never thought of. Um, for example, like the heated inserts to put screws in, so in 3D prints, um, to the speed calculation on the iPhone. I, I, I never would have thought of that. Um, also, <laughs> I never knew about the uh, this type of glue that Mark showed us. Um, I also ended up buying the uh, iFixit, I believe, um, set, and ended up buying, oops, I'll put that right there, that's fine, um, some small players um, that were recommended by this on Amazon. So I never knew about any of that. So that was very cool to see and to get um, and to add to my um, arsenal of, <coughs> of weaponry, if you want to put in engineering. Um, so that was great. So thank you, Mark. Um, I also loved the, the peer review, um, where you, when you posted something like you were like, I always had at least three to four different types of comments on my designs and they were great feedback. Like <clears throat> it was great to see positivity, creativity. Um, I enjoyed scrolling through and looking at the different types of projects. Some of these projects were just blew me away. Um, and, and they had a YouTube page, so it was an instant um, sub to their YouTube page. And I look forward to some of their future stuff that they're going to do. So Now, one thing that uh, I had been thinking throughout the entire course is creative engineering. Is that a new discipline or program um, that we should be offering at schools or maybe at SUNY Canton? Um, or should it be maybe students get a minor maybe in graphic multimedia and design because um, we have that program. And the reason I'm thinking this is because if you look, this robot right here, this is, this is actually drawn by one of my former students. 
Diana Norman. She actually graduated in the graphic multimedia design program and then got a four-year degree in our mechanical program. But <clears throat> looking at this, it's so detailed with different types of engineering. Like this is creative engineering is her passion. Like that's what she needs to get into. I wanted, I came into this knowing that some of this I probably would already know and I would pick up some things. Um, for a younger generation or for students that <clears throat> don't have my background, this probably just completely was like um, great, like just overwhelmed with a wealth of information, um, which is good because they, we need to get more uh, of this information out to those to, to say, hey, this is what's out here. This is engineering. This is the different types of things you can do and how fun it is. Um, so that was that was great to have you do that. So thank you, Mark. Um, I even made a website last summer where it was Dr. Craig's Community Connection, <coughs> where anybody can go on there and look at different types of engineering projects or engineering things. Um, they can download project files um, from beginner to small and do those. Or they could see what types of different uh, activities are out there for um, for people to do in engineering. Like, so <clears throat> again, uh, thank you all for listening. Um, I completely enjoyed, truly enjoyed the class. Uh, I had a very busy semester um, last fall, so it was nice kind of to take a little break and do some things for me to help me in professional development. Um, so I got a lot out of the class that uh, I'm going to use for future. And, and so thank you. Um, I hope everyone else had a good time. And <laughs> I probably say Juicy Nugget and uh, Big Robots Pop Footballs probably more now than I ever have, um, especially Juicy Nuggets now that I'm recording and posting YouTube videos. So uh, thank you, Mark, and um, everyone have a great day.